Well, good evening, folks. Um, hope you're all um, feeling well. And welcome to uh, another edition of Ripples from the Pond. Uh, today is uh, allegedly the 24th of January 2012. And I'm very pleased to see a certain presence back in the chat room. Had us all a bit worried there. Um, good evening, Dave. Um, I'd like to invite you in to explain yourself to everybody at some stage, if you're, if you're up for it later on, Dave. Um, we've all been uh, watching with bated breath. Um, and uh, it's caused me to do a little bit more research into the, uh, into the construct and this uh, system of regulations. Good evening, and nice to see you there, Dave. Um, and Lady Debs, too. So, um, at some stage, um, I want to um, invite Dave uh, in on the show so that he can uh, relate to us um, a little bit more of the details of his adventure. Um, I know there are a few people that uh, I've been in communication with um, throughout the last uh, 24, 36 hours that have uh, uh, wanted to know um, how things have been going. Interesting too how it is that there is a, a single thing that uh, seems to be a, something of a habit and that is the means by which people outside have a chance from, of, of actually finding out what's happening. Even to the extent that if they claim or if they are family members. And it put me in mind of a case of a friend of ours who... Um, was almost it was right on the edge of being reported to the police as missing and effect, effectively was actually in peti, uh, police detention. And it was only at the last moment when the person applying or submitting details about missing person that somebody actually came along and admitted that they thought he might be in custody, although they couldn't really tell them that. So that's what we're up against. It's a, a bit curious, isn't it? And as a result of that, it's um, it kind of I've had a, a couple of very interesting conversations today with um, uh, a couple of people. But primarily, um, what this tells us is that uh, the system, as it presently is, believes it's acceptable to um, to kidnap and deny um, information in terms of where people are. They become uncontactable, uh, uncontactable, or, tra or traceable. And I know that in the United States there was a, uh, again, another friend of ours who um, was incarcerated for, um, I think, offences against the uh, the road traffic laws out there. Um, and in order to prevent him from being contacted by friends, family members, and whatever, they kept moving him from one place to another. Not a very nice experience, and um, obviously a perversion of what we would call justice, if that sort of thing's going on. Yeah, and it's just a game. It's just a ride. And in fact, the more you see it in that way, I think, um, to a great extent, the more powerful that we can become. And to that end, um, I'm going to play through um, from the other desktop a video that... Uh, um, I listened to um, some time ago, in fact I listened to this one earlier today, but the man behind it I listened to some time ago. I don't know how many of you in the chat room here are familiar with the work of somebody called Mark Davis, uh, I believe it's Mark, no Mark Stevens, what am I on about? Uh, Mark Stevens appears to be using the same kind of language and has been using it for quite a lot longer than we do in the sense that he doesn't recognize what this thing is and wants people to explain what it is and at the same time establishing um, how incredibly impossible um, any notion that uh, this system can provide what it claims i.e. justice when effectively we're dealing with one corporation that is using various departments of itself ostensibly to arbitrate the law so um can you hear us? Hi there. How are you? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can hear you. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm fine. Thanks very much for everything you did yesterday. Um, really helped uh, Debs out, so oh. I appreciate it. Don't worry, mate. It's uh, it's a given. Yeah, uh, it was, um, I, I didn't get any messages from anybody. I didn't know anybody had called. 
Um, and they wouldn't let me uh, call out to Deb, so... Yeah, but when I found out afterwards, it was... It, was, it almost brought tears to my eye. Well, Dave, seriously, if there's one thing that's really important for us all to know in this, it's that because we've taken the stands that we have, um, that this thing must know that we're not alone. Yeah. And uh, I think they, they got that. They did. Mm. I didn't bother making a phone call, but I asked quite a few others to, because I thought, if I do it... I don't know, there was something about if I do it, what I want to do is save it. I, I'm going to save it, because uh, I, I've been doing a little bit of research because of this. Mm. You're one of two dominant stories that are kind of rattling around the sides of my life at the moment. And this is symbolic. Anyway, right. listen, we've got about... I've just put Hotel California on for you. <laughs> well, got about 15 minutes then. <laughs> You've got five, five minutes, Ark, just to sort of, you know... Do you, how do you want to approach this? Um, I don't know, um, it's up to you, mate. Um, I'm happy to just start wabbling around. You just, or you can ask me a few questions. Um, you can still, you can hear us talking. Oh, I think they can hear us. <laughs> Hello, everyone. You can. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I've got the settings wrong now, haven't I? Sorry about that. Let's make sure you're you're right on it. Stop the music so that everybody can hear exactly what we're talking about. Just let us know, folks, whether Dave's uh, audio is okay. Say a few words, Dave, please. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for um, everything you did um, yesterday. Um, it was uh, it was much appreciated. Okay, if someone can let me know in the chat room whether Dave's volume is a, a lot higher or lower than mine, to, for your hearing comfort, as it were. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's quite cool, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> have a little intimate moment there. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, Dave, it's, uh, these aren't things that you need to thank anybody for, I don't think. I think we're all happy to help, mate. And an, an awful lot did. Um, the work went out, and uh, I'm pretty sure their their phones um, received the impact of it. Yeah, well, the the funniest thing I heard was uh, that now I phoned up pretending to be my brother. Yes, it's you did. Extremely it's funny. funny. It's bless him. <laughs> it's just like you couldn't write this stuff. No, could I you? Just, you really just, couldn't write it. I just imagine the cops uh, um, getting that phone call. <laughs> You mean to say you're his brother? <laughs> no, I had me cracking up on, um, uh, on my way home today. Absolutely right. Uh, apparently my microphone's a little lower than yours. Let's see if this uh, improves things a little bit for folks. Um, thanks for that. Who was that? Um, Eric Techno Loud. Mahatma Coat Louder. Oh, so it looks like I've got to turn your mic down a little bit. You couldn't, you really could not write this stuff. You really couldn't. Um, and it's the reason I played that little bit that I did out of um, Patriot was because the um, the thing that's all all too obvious now is the fact that this is one entity that we are um, that, that represents the adversary that we have to sort of kind of push our way politely through. Anyway, that's a complete Dave. Mm -hmm. I didn't come on here to talk. I came on here to listen to your experience. What, how, what happened? When? And uh, how, you know, how, how was it for you <laughs> in terms of what what occurred? Because I know lots of people are interested. Okay. Um, well, I was heading up to uh, Leicester to do uh, um, a talk for Truth Juice Leicester. Um, so I was I was heading up the M1. And um, now, I mean, this might be just me being paranoid, um, but it it almost felt like they were waiting for me. Um, it might be paranoid, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm well aware that they um, they watch, you know, the uh, the Facebook um, quite eagerly. So um, I, I don't know. Um, but what happened was, I I drove past this uh, police car. Um, uh, as I, you know, I breezed past it like I've breezed past, past so many so far, and um, I, I guess I got about two miles or so away from it when 
I saw in my mirror, you know, the flashing lights and this car herring up behind me, about two miles away. And, um, I, you know, I knew it was for me. So, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't panic or anything. I just, I just carried on as normal. He, this, this car came screaming up t- to me in the uh, fast lane and then pulled in behind me and turned his lights off. And then I, I was like, yeah, okay. So, um, he told me for a little while, you know, what he, you know, followed my movements from, from lane to lane. And then, and then he pulled me over. Um, so, uh, I, I do have film actually of the, uh, of the, the actual uh, stop. Excellent. So, um, I, I was actually trying to find um, an interesting uh, section to, to play, but um, I haven't really had a good chance to, uh, to, to listen through it. But uh, I'll, I'll probably put it, um, I'll probably put it up on, on YouTube or something. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, I cracked the window and... Um, immediately he starts shouting through the window, I can't, I can't hear, hear you through this, I can't hear you through this. I said, well, you know, I can hear you perfectly well. No, I can't hear you because uh, the traffic's so loud, I can't hear you. Open the windows a bit, uh, a bit, a bit more. So, um, I opened the window a bit more. I said to him, this is private property. If you reach in and uh, open the door, you're trespassing. And he went, trespassing? You know, like that. And so, um, so yeah, we we went through the uh, the the you know usual sort of uh, usual rubbish, you know. I uh, want to see your documents. As he as I said, uh, as he asked for my documents, um, I served him um, with uh, my paperwork. Um, he didn't want to accept it to start with um, until you know he kept asking me for my documents, and I said, "This is for you." He, he said, "Well, what is it?" I said, "Well, it's documentation." So he took it. That's when I said, you've been served. Um, and he took it back and, and sat in the car and read it. Um, in the meantime, another, uh, another police car arrived um, and pulled in front of me and reversed right up so, uh, so I couldn't go anywhere. So I got the feeling that that was going to be the end. Yeah, that was the beginning of the imprisonment. Sorry? That was the beginning of the imprisonment yeah. fall. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, um, yeah, the, the four of them had a, a, a bit of a conflab, and um, a, a, a next cop come over to me and, uh, and was a bit more brusque and said, uh, have, you, "Have you got insurance?" I said, I, I, "I don't claim to have any documentation of, uh, of that kind." Um, and he, he got up and walked away, and I could hear them. They were slightly behind my car. I could hear one of them say. So you're going to smash the window then? So I was thinking, yeah, okay. Um, so, and another one of the cops from the second car came over to me and said, uh, right, we'll need you to, uh, to get out of the car. And I said, well, um, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy to get out of the car, but I don't work for free. So I'm going to have to charge you um, about £20,000 for that service. Do you want me to get out of the car? And he said, yes, I do. I said, good. And I, I just happened to have my little uh, um, invoice pad. So I, I wrote out a bill um, oh, and I got him to sign it. And he signed it. Wow. So it, I, I've got it, you know, it made a nice copy. I gave him the, uh, the, the top copy. Um, and um, so he's, he's accepted fame. I got out of the car. So... Um, I've avoided uh, getting my window smashed, which yeah, probably doesn't matter now. But uh, um, but I think I've got twenty thousand pounds coming from this guy. Um, <laughs> so so um, yeah, I, I got out. Um, now the one thing I should have done, and I, I didn't. Um, I, I've got this uh, this uh, statement of truth that um, I, I drew up. To, to basically try and head off them um, seizing my car. But because I got out of the car, um, they wouldn't let me go and get it, uh, or get anything for my car at that point. Um, so they got me out of the car and uh, the guy cautioned me. Um, and I said they wouldn't let me uh, go back to the car because he said, oh, we're going to seize your car. I said, oh, okay, hold on a second. 
I've got some, if you're going to see my car, I've got some documentation for you to, to fill in. And they wouldn't let me go for it. I think they had an idea what I was going to try and do. Um, so, uh, un unfortunately, they uh, put me in the back of the car, and uh, the cop car. And, um, yeah, oh, before that, sorry, um, the, the, the guy said, well, we're going to have to have your keys. And I said, well, you know, I, I'm not, I don't consent to you taking my property. And that's when three of them grabbed hold of me from behind, and the, um, or two of them grabbed me from behind, and the third biggest guy was prizing the key from my fingers. Right. Um, so they, they, they took that. Um, they put me in the back of the uh, car, and I was... Uh, I think the whole thing took about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I was off to uh, Hatfield Police Station. So what sort of time was um, that? That was about three, half three. I think I got, no, I think I got to the police station about four o'clock. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, um, they managed, uh, they, they sort of put me in a sort of side room. Yeah. And uh, they put all my stuff next to me. And um, one guy went to the, ch the charging desk, I guess, and uh, another cop stood by the entrance guarding it. But they put my phone right next to me and stuff, so I picked it up and I, I started uh, um, texting devs and stuff. Right. And uh, I, got, I got a call from the guy from Truth Juice, Lester, and I could tell him that, uh, I told him that I couldn't make it. Right. Um, and uh, that's when he basically told me to turn the phone off. Right. Um, so that, that was, I think that was the last time I was able to get a message out to, to devs. Um, and, um, yeah, they, uh, they stuck me in a cell. Um, obviously those cells are designed to, uh, to kind of intimidate and, uh, um, and make it very uncomfortable. They've got that nasty strip lighting on full blast yeah. all night. Yeah. Um, you know, a hard surface for you to, to lie down on. Yeah. Um, and they, they sort of grabbed me out of the cell and said, um, okay, we, we're going to take fingerprints and, uh, and DNA. I said, well, I don't consent to any, um, you know, giving of any DNA. Um, uh, I'm doing, you know, this is, um, I'm doing all this under protest and duress. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't consent to it. So, did they I still said, take it? Sorry? Did they still take it or? Oh yes, uh, they took me into the uh, fingerprint room, and um, and I didn't resist when they put my hand on the uh, on the on the machine on the glass. But as soon as he went to take it, I, I moved moved my hand. Yeah. Um, in retrospect, you know, I could have just get, gotten away with just saying, you know, I, you know, I don't consent to it. But you know, essentially, um, they got one or two fingers on um, that first go, I think they did three or four more goes, and each time they got um, more, should we say, violent. There wasn't any actual overt violence. They stuck um, the handcuffs on, and uh, they were squeezing the cuffs tight on me, very tight. I'm still, my, arm, my uh, wrist is still aching from it. And, um, and then they were twisting the, the handcuffs so that my, my hands were forced down onto the, onto the glass. Effectively torture. Um, sorry? A torture, effectively. Yeah. And I, I was saying that, you know, why, why do you feel you have to torture me? I'm just, uh, um, you know, asserting my rights not to have my, my property stolen from me. Sure. Um, yeah, so, um, as, that, as it happens, I believe that was uh, one of the new charges that was brought against me, um, obstructing a, a police officer in, uh, in, in his duty. Amazing. Um, so, uh, sorry. Amazing, really. That when you think about it. Well, not really. You know what they're trying to do. They want, to, you know, to get their whatever cut they they get. Yeah, they they need to slap on as many uh, as many charges as they can, yeah, so they bit, can get you for something. Talk a bit more that's about the, that. Uh, that's the ultimate that aim. Yeah, I mean, I, one of the things that I've done today is I've looked yeah. at a document that came out in 1993, um, which um, relates to uh, the um, 
<laughs> speed enforcement. These, but this is like going back 1993, and you've got a meeting um, of the county surveyors, uh, sponsored by the County Surveyors Society Research Fund, and it's uh, published by the County Surveyors Society. And uh, it's a report, basically, talking about uh, the use of cameras for the enforcement of speed limits and enhancing their effectiveness. All right. Okay. And uh, basically, it sets out in there exactly how it is that everything's funded from the public purse, of course, but how then it's effectively contracted out, so they're getting sort of double goodies on it. It gets paid for out of the public purse and then operated by private corporations for profit. Right. Um, anyway, yeah, so you, when you're talking about the way that they're looking for their cut, that's their performance indicator now, by the looks of it. Right. So, you know, I I could hear them, you know, before when I was sitting in the uh, side room, I could hear them trying to cook up as many charges as they could. Um, they're like, you know, I could hear them sort of trying to throw in the kitchen sink if they could, you know. Um, so, um, in all, I've got six charges. Um, oh, no. So, I, I mean, I can go through them if you want. Yeah, why not? Um, so, the first one I, I mentioned was, uh, you know, um, obstructing a, a police officer. Um, second one was that uh, I, I, drove a, I drove a motor vehicle, um, uh, otherwise, in uh, hang on, otherwise in accordance with a license authorised Authorizing you to drive a motor vehicle that class, so driving without a license. Yeah. Um, next one was um, oh no insurance. Yeah. The number four was um, I guess that's no tax. Um, number five is that I had uh, um, oh this was an interesting one and. Um, that the uh, it's essentially fraud by misrepresentation. Um, actually, it's not mentioned as fraud. They, they kept record, um, they kept sort of uh, referring to it as fraud. But uh, let me read it in um, in its entirety. I'll, I'll miss out a few of the details. But uh, um, on Monday, blah blah blah, at such and such place, being being a person required by virtue of the Motor Vehicle Excise Registration Act 1984 to furnish particulars relating to a vehicle, namely um, um, the car, um, furnish particulars to which, uh, which to your knowledge were false or in a material respect misleading in that you informed DVLA that the vehicle had been exported to another country. Oh, right, that's interesting. Yeah, because I, I uh, basically, uh, uh, in my paperwork, I told them that I'm ex exporting the, the car outside the jurisdiction of the um, United okay. Kingdom. Yeah. And I sent back the uh, exported thing. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, I mean, how can be how can uh, something be fraud if it's been uh, if you've done fully it honestly, disguised? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Interesting. <clears throat> and the last one, um, do, 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 let's see. Oh, that... Uh, my registration mark, which I don't have, um, uh, was does not is not in accordance with their regulations about how the mark should be displayed. Yeah. Um, now, what was interesting um, was that when I deregistered the car, I'd sent the DVLA, um, you know, uh, notices about. Uh, um, how about what I intended to do, and um, you know I asked for objections, and I also told them what my um, my new um, insignia would be, yeah. and asked them to record it but not register it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I've heard from um, many times that uh, the DVLA do not record that that um, new insignia, um, and that's. That's how they, they get you because they, they say, well, we haven't got any record of it. But when I was in the back seat of the car, I noticed on their little computer that it said, um, you know, my, my, my new insignia, uh, not recognised. Uh, the real number was, and it was the, uh, the, 
old registration number of the car. They're old. So it looks like they did record it. They did, yeah. Yeah, they've, they've linked the two. Yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah, it's, that's uh, very interesting. There's been a, a little shift there, it seems. Hmm. Yeah, I'm um, pretty convinced. Which that is it, interesting. Well, I don't know. What well, no, mm-hmm. I, th- I think it, it'll constantly seek to morph as we um, rise to challenge it um, or question it. Um, yeah. And that, well, I think that's what we're seeing. Right, yeah. Um, so, uh, so um, just, essentially, uh, sorry? Just out of interest, um, I want to compare notes with you in terms of the cubicle they put you into with the one they put me into. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also an air conditioning unit in this thing I was uh, stuck in. So there was mm-hmm. also a, a constant horrible hum of a, you know, a fan blowing. Yeah. You have yeah, that too? Yeah, there was uh, there was that. There was um, I say there was also that horrible strip light. Yeah. Um, you know, I could I could I could feel it feel it with my eyes closed. Um, so and also this is quite funny when when you press their intercom system. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would uh, it would make a, a sort of pleasant ringing sound, but it also um, there was a flashing green light and a, a ticking sound. That went off every second and a mist every so often, yeah, yeah. Um, and way long after that, they they stopped. You know, they they answered your query or whatever. The thing would still keep going ticking. So I, I don't know if it was some kind of psychological torture or something, but uh, in the end, I you know about an hour into it, I I, I pressed the um the uh, the intercom again and said, I think I've broken your intercom. The thing's still going off. And eventually they turned it off. But I noticed every time you press that thing, that ticking would just keep going. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyway. Um, what about, do you, have so anything, do you have anything to read? No, no. What about, um, what about food and drink? Well, they, they did offer me um, some hot food. I, I declined it. Um, Wise man. They offered me, they offered me some water. Um, initially, at that time I declined it as well yeah um, uh, in the morning they offered me uh, some water and that time my mouth was uh, so dry that I, I I had to say yes I've got to have uh, I'll take some water yeah um, I smelled it to make sure there wasn't that too much uh, fluoride in it well but, what uh, I what I did was I just um, took the odd um, mouth wetting from the hand washing little did they have one of these built-in stainless steel things where you Put your hands under it for the water to run, or press a button. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, um, I just thought so. That that's going to be the one they're least likely to have fucked with. So I just drank, a, just wet my mouth with that a few times. Yeah. Well, I um, I just uh, with the uh, with the water they gave me, I, I used half of it just to uh, basically clean my teeth and, and yeah. you know wash my mouth out. Yeah. And uh, you know I I did drink the uh, last half of it. Um. So. Um, I did. I did get a little bit of water, um, and for for breakfast was a cereal bar. I declined that as well. Um, now, um, now, after about uh, a few hours, I mean, I basically I tried. I just meditated. For, yeah, that's what I did for as long as I could. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, after a few hours, I I rang the uh, the alarm thing and yeah. said. Uh, could I could I make a phone call to to to, to my girlfriend? Yeah. And um, and they they said well, no, actually what I said was I rang the alarm. The guy came out to me, and he had a blanket, um, and it was pretty cold in there anyway. Right. Um, and he he came up opened uh, opened the hatch and said, oh, you want a blanket? Um, I said, well, actually, I wanted to my to um. You know, to get my phone so I can uh, find my girlfriend. And he said, well, uh, I can't let you have the phone, um, um, but you can use our phone to uh, to speak to your girlfriend. I said, well, okay, but my I don't know the number off my, off my heart. I'll need the phone. They said, well, I will have to speak to the sergeant. Um, do you want the blanket? And, and without thinking, I said, yeah, and I grabbed it. And I thought, well, hang on, did I just accept a benefit there? Um... 
but you know, I, I, it's too late. I, I'd, I'd already grabbed the things. So. You can't listen. You don't. You, don't um, you, you, you can't worry about stuff like that. Uh, I don't think. You know, the fact that you've actually created well, consent. Um, Basically, David, anything that they do once well, they've. Go on, sorry. Well, no, I was going to say, I mean, it's funny because um, later on, um, the next morning, I'll, I'm jumping ar- ar- around here. Next morning, um, they've given me these charge sheets, they stuck them through the door, and uh, I was looking through them. I pressed the, um, pressed the intercom again and said, uh, can, I, can I get a pencil to make some notes? Um, the guy comes to the door. And um, you know, I had my hand out, and he said, he he said, well, I can only give this this I can only lend this pen. I'm only going to lend this pen to. Uh, no, what do you say? No, he said, I'm lending this pen to, or uh, um, pencil to, um, only to people with the name Murphy. <laughs> and right. uh, he handed it to me, and I took it, and he was laughing. But I was thinking, oh no, he he just tried to you know get. Um, you know, get joined her there. Mm-hmm. It sounded like, you know, so, you know, he's laughing and all that, but, you know, I thought, well, that's how they do it, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be how they do it? They pretend to yep. be messing around. Yeah. So, um, I, I made my notes and I hit the intercom again and, um, and somebody else came to the, to the, to the window. I said, um, yeah, I, I, I took this pen because it was given to me, um, so um, I wanted to give it back to the uh, to the other the other officer because he's he's planning to lend it to somebody called Murphy. So hopefully that uh, uh, <laughs> headed that one off. Right. Um, yeah. So so literally I was uh, I was in the in the police cell um, to about uh, I guess I have no idea what time it was, but somewhere around about eight nine o'clock. Um, uh, sorry, I've just noticed Eric uh, just said that uh, I got joined when I um, they got joined when I took the pencil in the chat box. But I, I said I hopefully I got I got round it. Um, yeah, so they at uh, around about nine o'clock they dragged me to um, to uh, the uh, remand centre I think it was called underneath the uh, the court. Right. And all this time, all this time when they whenever they wanted me to do anything. Um, you know, I'd, I'd already told them I'm not, I'm not consenting, so they had to actually leave me. So I, I just stood there and I waited for somebody to uh, just grab my arm, just, you know, just to touch to my arm yeah, and I would yeah. start moving. Yeah. Um, so they led me to the uh, remand centre. Um, I sat there for, um, for a few hours and more meditating. Um, and, you know, even though I... Uh, you know, I've no, I don't think I've got any fear of death and I don't have any fear of uh, what they can do to me. Um, it was very, it was quite, kind of difficult to meditate because, uh, um, you know, your mind keeps going back to all these things, all these things that, uh, you know, um, are going on and, and what could happen and what, uh, you yeah. know, what your response should be and all this sort of thing. Here's how I'd describe so, it. Um, it's like a kaleidoscope of repeating memory video plays and recollections of what you did and how you yeah. reacted, isn't it? Exactly. And it's intensive. Um, it's like, there's that, and then there's other stuff that will creep in too. I hope your awareness of some people out here crept in. I know lots of people um, are thinking about it. Yeah, I was, I was wondering, you know, because I, I did, last message to uh, to Debs was, uh, you know, um, tell, tell TNS. So I was wondering what um, what was going on out here in the chat box and stuff. Well, I think, um, I, I'm not sure when the word got to TNS, but um, it was when I came home, I'd been out all day, that I saw it was there and um, did what I could to move it around the various rooms and forums. Um, and I think, I don't know. Anyway, carry on, you were saying. Uh, that, that second period of uh, disturbed meditation. Yeah, um I was saying for the meditation, I was saying to, to Dev how it was going, it was like, um, you know, I'd uh, close my eyes and uh, take a few deep breaths, try and centre myself, um, concentrate on my breathing, and then all of a sudden uh, a thought or a memory of what happened would creep in, and then it'd be a flood 
of all these other things and I'd be like, oh no, no, hang on, take more deep breaths and it was, it was, um, it was, it was very, it was a little tricky but uh, I, I guess I managed to, uh, I, I, I was, I was very calm um, That's most the main of the time thing. in there. That's the main thing. Um, yeah. That's sensible. So, yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't sleep. There's no way to sleep in those places. No. They're, they're designed so you don't sleep. Yeah. Um, I mean, effectively, so, that, that is a form of sleep deprivation. I mean, it, it is sleep deprivation. Yeah. I mean, the, the best thing I the best thing I did with the, uh, with the the blanket, which didn't cover me, it was smelly and dirty. Um, so all I did was fold it up as a kind of pillow. Yeah. Open it in the middle and slip my head in so it would cover my eyes so I didn't have to see the, uh, the, the, the lights. Innovative. Um, yeah, so it was kind of, I wore it like a hat almost. Um, so, so yeah, um, after a while, after, um, you know, I think it was uh, about one o'clock in the afternoon today, yeah. um, they came, dragged me up to the court. Um, and uh, yeah, I got in there. I was in, I was in the uh, the glass case, uh, which is quite funny. Um, the uh, there was a, a whole load of people in there, including a very smarmy looking guy in a in a pinstripe suit. And um, it might be in my imagination, but he, he 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 was sitting. Okay, you've got the clerk obviously in front of the judges, and. Uh, about three rows in front of the clerk, to to the clerk's right, there's this this guy um, in his pin, pinstripe suit, and he seemed to be giving them instructions. I, I, I kind of caught it once or twice. He, you know, he mouthed some instructions to the to the clerk, which is very strange. Really? Anyway, um, um, so um, the uh, judges uh, or the clerk tried the name game. I said, um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm. David Murphy family, um, and uh, you know, um, Mr. David Murphy, you know, they, uh, is, uh, well, I said, they're asking, is that my name? I said, no. Um, uh, we, they asked me for my date of birth. I said, well, Mr. David Murphy's date of birth is blah, blah, blah. Um, Mr. David Murphy's address is blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't contract there. Um, they said, well, how do you plead to the charges? I said, well, first of all, before we start, yeah, thanks, Vin. I know, I had to, <laughs> that's all I could think of doing, I'm afraid, sir. He's missing an H uh, in there, I think. Oh, yeah, I know. I think there's an R missing as well, because, ah, doesn't yeah. mean anything. He makes, I think he's sick, is he? I think maybe he's um, just spat something, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, um... Yeah, they wanted me to plead. I said, well, excuse me, before we start, um, I, you know, I, um, I have to uh, ask a few questions about this. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't mm, plead anything until I, uh, I've, um, you know, I've, I can get these, these answers, these questions clarified. Yeah. Um, they said, well, they got scared then. They said, oh, we can't answer any questions. Can't answer any questions. Um, yeah, well, we're going to we're going to a journey, and then you can ask questions there. Um, so, uh, uh, essentially, I mean, long story short, they just uh, they they adjourned it and said uh, basically come back in. Uh, well, it's, it's actually three months nearly. It's in April. And in the meantime, they've detained your property. Or oh, sorry, your yep, companions. Um, yep, they've uh, they've kept hold of it. Um, uh, in order to get it back, um, I'm going to have to produce uh, proof of ownership, which I don't have, and proof of MOT, insurance, and uh, and tax, which I don't have, um, and, uh, and so on. I mean, that's it. That's it. Uh, the, the, their process means that there's no way I can get it back. Um, so, you know, um, as far as I'm concerned, no, at the end of the day... Um, the, the car was my last um, attachment. Right. You know, it was, uh, I, mean, I only got the damn thing because of ego. Um, and, um, you know, as far as, at the end of the day, it's just a car. I'm hoping to, um, hoping to um, get remedy after the fact. Um, 
And twenty thousand uh, pounds should go towards something, I'm sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's that's basically it. I mean, um, within um, I don't know, half an hour of uh, of uh, then adjourning it, I was back on the street, um, having to try and get the rest of my stuff that was in the boot of uh, my car um, from the from the pound, which was about. 15, 20 miles away. Jesus Christ. And that's it. Um, I was due to do a talk up in Birmingham, but uh, there was no way I was going to get up there for, for that, so unfortunately I had, to, I had to cancel it. Yeah, I mean, legalised plunder, I think, is the only description I can have for it. And I see this now, um, so it's really widespread, the number of people that are getting um, extorted from in one way or another. Um... What, what do you reckon uh, your next moves are going to be in terms of this? Um, well, I, I, I don't really want to say too much, actually, because sure. I do know that they're, um, they, they listen to, to these things. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had experience, um, you know, to, off, before one of my talks, um, I, I went, into, went into court and they already knew that I was doing a talk about, uh, you know, about withholding money from their utility companies. So they, they monitor all these things. Absolutely. Um, there's, there's, there's a couple of other things that I kind of noticed about this as well. Um, one is um, the Bedini coil video that came out very recently. Mm -hmm. um, I've little doubt that this system doesn't want to really liberate um, systems that could uh, provide autonomy for people. Um, and you made another change in your life very recently too, didn't you? Uh, did I? <laughs> um, well, I've not. I've made a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, I don't see any. I mean, you were talking at the beginning about feeling paranoid. I think in these times, uh, a sense of paranoia is a very healthy thing to have because it does keep you, you know, occasionally a little bit more alert. Mm. Um, and at the end of the day, um, who's really paranoid here? It's not us that need to uh, snoop and film constantly and record, is it? No, it's not. And, you know, they they are watching us. Um, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's not... I say, so I, I've come across it twice now where um, they've known what, you know, what's been going on from, from watching Facebook or pro probably watching, watching Skype. Um, yeah, and you know, there's there's also also no doubt that there are a few um, amongst our number who are reporting back to the the powers that be. Well, let's put it like this: um, it is in that way, in that sense, this whole thing is a part of us. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, it's like you you can't, um, you know, you, you were brought up thinking you were free, and then you discover that actually no, it's really just a a well-disguised penal system, uh, and then the level of draconian control and imposition, th th that thermostat got turned up. So we're now in a very interesting situation to the extent that we all know, those of us that have got eyes and ears, as it were, um, that the system is kind of, has a malignant con content to it, or capacity to it. Um, mm. And... Uh, it's kind of a very interesting dance because I know that you've remained calm right the way through this. Um, so your demeanour, I suppose, will have counted for quite a lot. Or it's the only way I think you can, you can be with this thing. Um, as, aside from the fact that, you know, denying it consent and uh, joined her. And I, you know, listen... After all night not being able to sleep and, and uh, them shoving bits of paper in front of you and offering you a pen or a pencil and you accepting it is some kind of joinder. I mean, you know, to me that those things have, uh, are of little importance at the end of the day because uh, you've been subjected to torture, effectively. And yeah, well, it, if it's supposed to be a game about... Um, intellectual capacity I mean I think well for me anyway what you did in the court there I mean this this whole notion that you're working you're working against a system which is a 
It's just one. Pretending not to be. Right. Mm. But, you know, it's... Um, well, it's a, a word about paranoia. Um, I mean, uh, again, I was... Uh, you know how your mind kind of entertains all, like, the worst possible scenarios? Yeah. Um, I, you know, the, I was just about to send uh, my last message to Debs was going to be, um, you know, if I, if I should die in custody, um, re- make sure everyone knows I'm not suicidal or, or violent. Yeah. Um, you were about to send yeah, that last um, message out. I was saying that might sound paranoid but people do die in custody and um, mostly mostly black people so um, you know again entertaining worst fear oh for crying out loud yeah oh. it's doing it again isn't it yeah uh, maybe bandwidth is being interfered with you see, this is quite a sensitive subject matter, I right. suspect. Yeah, can you can you hear? Looks like the call's still playing up, folks. Hello? I'll put some music on again, folks. I think I'll put the rest of that Return to Innocence on. <laughs> 